so in this segment we're going to be talking about UK exporters are struggling and it isn't hard to see why. It does take a while to actually um, go into detail, but, uh, there's a lot of a bit more fluff in this article, but I suppose you could call it some preamble or some context, so we'll, we'll go with that. So trade is often the, the poor uh, it, the poor relation in discussions of UK economy, so you know people don't really talk about trade that much anymore. Though it is one of the most requested topics among readers, you know, people, it seems like, is this one the Telegraph, the Sunday Times? It looks like Times readers are very interested in trade. It could be because of their jobs or it could be uh, just because they're interested in trade. Um, it's interesting that they are interested, as much as I've used those words too much. Some of whom recall when the trade figures were the number one economic indicator, often leading the news, uh, assuming they might be older readers. One is that they are now published on the same day and at the same time as a clutch of other figures, including monthly uh, gross domestic products, so GDP, a relatively a relative newcomer that grabs most of the attention. You know, gross domestic product shows you, I think, the total, um, total goods and services of a country, which GDP is a, um, a much better economic indicator than uh, your exports or trade deficits, but it's not the end all and be all. You need like a, a whole swathe of a whole swathe of statistics to understand anything. A second reason that in these times of huge capital flows, trade figures no longer move the markets in the way they used to. I'm assuming he's talking trade figures in terms of goods and not services, because he mentions capital flows, which I'm assuming is more of a service type thing. Um, the era when a bad set of trade figures could, by putting pressure on the pound, force interest rates up, and in 1970 may have cost Harold uh, Wilson, then the then Labour Prime Minister, the uh, general election are long gone. You know, there were times when I think trade had a much bigger impact on the pound, um, trade and goods effectively, but now it's more uh, services and people kind of buying and shorting the pound does have an impact on currency um, as well. So these were uh, the, the figures that we can see. We'll actually look at these figures. So you can look at the trade. Uh, the trade deficit. So, in terms of goods, you can see um, in 20, uh, 2020 it rose um, and then it uh, dropped. So, this is the deficit. So, a lower deficit is typically a good thing, um, a higher one is not a good thing. So, what you want is, it, it, depending on what your economic model is, you want to export more than you import. It just, but it depends on what you want. You know, if you want to, if you're a service-based economy, importing a lot of goods isn't necessarily a bad thing because you're more focused on exporting services. It depends what you specialize in. But if you look at here, you know, the trade deficit is huge now, minus 25 billion pounds, crazy numbers, because our imports have been, our exports have been hit very badly by Brexit because of the um, the EU import checks, and you know, because of the fact that we're more reliant on EU imports. And we haven't done such aggressive checks. You know, UK companies are still importing a lot of goods from the EU. So that's what's constituting this huge drop off. But there will be, you know, rest of the world numbers in there as well. That'll still play a part in it. UK exports haven't rebounded like global trade figures have. That's another key problem. And there it is. We missed the world trade upturn. So that's G7 countries. That's us. They still tell us something, however, but there can that and that something can be quite important. Lost in the statistical flurry last month was the news that the UK's trade deficit in January was easily the biggest on record, at a huge 26.5 billion in goods and 16 billion for goods and services taken together. So you can see services play a huge part in the UK exports; that they can take off 10 billion in terms of a deficit, but that deficit in goods is still very high. And the fact that the service economy, as we've spoken about previously, has taken a massive hit. Because it's not just financial services, it's not just, you know, things like trades and clearing houses and all this stuff, it's events management, it's wedding planning and all of these other things. It's, um, you know, solicitors, uh, you know, by the Lugano Convention, depending on how those statistics are um, actually recorded. Uh, you know, trade trade and services is very, very broad. I think it's something you can buy but can't touch. It's like going to, uh, when you go to a restaurant, those sorts of things where you are buying the food but you're also paying for a service as well. So on cooking the food, serving the food, etc., they, these were not figures of nervous disposition. The deficit in goods is usually about 12 billion, while the overall deficit is normally well below 10 billion. A new method introduced by HMRC at the start of the year for collecting data on imports and exports from the EU may have played a part. But the thing is, you can, if you create a new methodology, you can go back and look at previous years to um, redo those numbers if you want to. HMRC thinks the figures of for imports have not 
um, much been affected, but that some sharp, sharp fall in exports to the EU are due to the change and the, the, with the imports is because we haven't started physical inspections yet of EU goods because if we do that, they're going to see a massive drop off of imports and delays. Even so, the figures are a reminder that when it comes to the balance of payments, the UK is pretty unbalanced. The trade deficit is very high. 40 years ago, the UK ran a surplus in manufactured goods and up to that point had always done so. The last time the UK had an overall surplus on trade in goods was also in the early 1980s thanks to North Sea oil. Now, necessarily, that's not a good or a bad thing, us being so dominant in um, tr tra uh, goods exports especially when the UK moved to services, which services services are far more lucrative than um, the manufacturing industry or the agri-food industry. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that this has happened. It's when you see a drop-off across the board, you know, services are dropping off, uh, manufacturing is dropping off, agri-food is dropping off. That's when you should be really concerned, when there's all the numbers start dropping dramatically. Some of those can carry the others. Services in the UK have traditionally carried manufacturing and agri-food. Um, just because the service economy was so strong in the UK and services were worth so much. But um, now, even if services can carry on, can carry um, the other two, manufacturing and agri-foods have taken such a dramatic hit, the, um, even a strong service economy, you know, an outstanding service economy, uh, would, would struggle. Which brings me to one of my points today. The UK's oil surplus lasted... A, a, it lasted until the early 2000s, but now that too is in a trade deficit. We're importing a lot of oil. Um, I don't think we export North Sea oil, at least that much of it, but because the UK uses so much uh, oil, we have to import it in, because it's not a surprise given how many people have cars and vehicles in this country. Given the surge in oil and imported gas prices, that deficit is only going to get bigger, probably significantly so, you know, especially with our lack of uh, reserves when it comes to, um, I think, oil and gas. You know, the, uh, Theresa May, I think, was the one who sold it off, which, how's that looking now, Theresa? Not very good, is it? The other worry recently highlighted by the Office of Budget Responsibility, the OBR, which we seem to mention on a daily basis, and mentioned here a couple of weeks ago, is the UK's disengagement from international trade. You know, it's not just... Um, it's not just EU-based trade, it's the rest of the world trade is struggling as well. Trade is good, it drives productivity and other improvements as well, it creates jobs. It is no accident that politicians of the past lauded um, export-led growth, um, export or die used to be a slogan, well, guess we chose death then, didn't we? And in the run-up to the referendum, the Bank of England highlighted how the UK had become more a more open economy. That's down to the fact that we were part of the EU single market and customs union, you know, we became a leading export of certain products because of the fact that you could trade with no tariffs, barriers, anything. It was free, you know. Goods can move between the UK and Germany as easily as goods can move between England and Scotland, for example. While every other big economy member of the G7 has seen a recovery in trade intensity, it's not just G7 members either, it's other countries around the world, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at other graphs. Trade as a proportion of GDP from the low point of 2020, the UK's trade intensity is now even down from that nadir. So when the pandemic hit, essentially our trade figures dropped, which makes sense it happened to the world. That's why trade figures are spiking so much. Ours are still doing worse, which is crazy. The OBR sticking to its view that will result in a 15% drop in the UK's trade intensity. And you've got to think that, you know, the, the pandemic had around a 2% hit on our GDP. Oh, it had about, um, I think experts are saying that the... Um, effectively because the pandemic is short term and the uh, brexit is long and medium term it's going to have a, a much bigger effect on our economy especially our trading numbers the rest of the world will rebound we won't the eu trade deals rolled over by the government and the new deals being negotiated and those in prospect um, will only compensate for a tiny fraction of the losses as a result of brexit according to the official forecast and even then they might actually make things worse because these trade deals 0.02 percent um, worst case scenario minus 0.02 percent so it could actually make things worse especially because we haven't signed any trade deals that add a lot to our gdp i think they've said a the usd will only add 0.16 which is nothing very very little for our economy overall and it doesn't make up for the um the four percent we lost via brexit Sunak, who supported leaving the EU, which kind of is surprising, but you know, he's the the author says, like many who worked, um, many who work or worked for hedge funds, backed leaving the EU because through volatility you can make a lot of money through trades. There are a lot of traders who made a lot of money from Brexit um, because of the currency uh, shifts. You know, you had um, the currency dropped, I think, and then it rose through the night, effectively until the result came in, and then there was a massive crash. 
So if you kind of guess what was going to happen, you can make a lot of money off that. You know, that's one of the ways George Soros actually made a lot of money by betting against the UK during the 90s when we had um, a currency crash. Reluctantly, Sunak conceded in evidence to the Commons Treasury Committee last week that Brexit was inhibiting UK trade, which no duh. Johnson asked the same question by the Liaison Committee, suggested it was because imports were not trying hard enough. And, and the thing is, right, they can blame the private sector for being lazy or whatever, but if there's money to be made, the private sector would be all over this, especially with the losses they're incurring. The problem is, you know, EU countries have their own laws. Rest of the world countries, Australia, New Zealand, they will have their own rules on imports. You've got to go through other customs barriers. You might have language barriers. That's another problem. The paperwork is so different. Geography also gets in the way, which Brexiteers still really don't understand how uh, much of a part geography plays in trade. It's crazy to me. Um, but sometimes it's not worth it. You know, it might be worth exporting a product to France, but not to New Zealand because it's on the other side of the planet. Honestly, I know which one of them I would believe on anything to do with economics. Well, to be fair, if one of them told me something, I'd definitely fact check it three times. If, one of, if they both told me it was... Uh, raining outside I'd, I'd definitely double check that as well because they're both known liars exports of goods fell by even more um, last year by two percent from a depressed 2020 levels because the pandemic did have an impact but the fact that it's gotten worse is, is shocking a couple of years into his chancellorship george osborne set out his ambition for doubling uk exports which didn't really work while the volume of exports and services last year was the lowest since 2014 you know george was chancellor back then while exports of goods were um, last low in 2010, when of course we had the uh, Great Recession. You might say that 2021 was a year when the economy was recovering from the pandemic, so th so some disappointment was inevitable. Um, generally, manufacturers were beset with supply sh shortages. Now, the UK wasn't doing import checks back then, so a lot of these supply um, shortages and problems we had um, in terms of getting things into the country, these you can argue are global problems, which is is fine. You know, you can get away with that argument. But when it comes to our exports, our exports weren't just damaged because of global supply problems. It was damaged because of Brexit and the former Brexit we took, which led to the EU doing um, full import checks on our products. Yes, they can do more aggressive SPS checks and they can say we're going to check everything full alert mode. Um, they chose not to because of our um, high standards, but um, it's still having a huge impact on our exports. And some service sectors, notably travel and transport, were a long way below normal levels, which makes sense, you know, countries were shut off to um, international trade. However, on the same basis that saw the UK exports fall last year, France's exports grew by 9.2% last year, while Germany's even stronger grew 9.9%. You'd expect Germany to have been even more hobbled by the impact of supply shortages on industry, which is true. And these are the points that Labour and other people need to make is, why is it that the rest of the world is picking up trade and we're not? You know, you can't keep blaming the private sector for the problems. He says, I do not blame Britain's exporters for the malaise, which is true. We have some superb exporting business, uh, businesses, but, we, but they are operating with one hand tied behind their backs and with notably less government help and support than competitor countries, which I don't know how much support other countries are offering um, their exporters, you know, to go to, to use the UK and other third countries, but our support... Um, Agencies are a joke. You know, they told Cheshire Cheese Man to set up subsidiaries within the, within the EU, which is good advice, but you're telling them to take money out of the UK and put it into an EU member state, which is just madness. It's just madness, but it shows you how bad things are that they have to give out such advice. He goes, I don't think a new royal yacht, which, you know, the government is proposing to use as a future export drives, will change that. And, you know, there are still some people who remember how bad the empire was for them. Why the hell would they look to a royal yacht as a great thing to, you know, show their show off to their country, etc.? There are a lot of countries that don't like the empire. Could you imagine if we rolled up on Jamaica with a royal, royal yacht? Do you think they'd be happy about that? Especially when they want to get rid of the queen as their head of state. Um, it is too late to do anything about the main cause of this malaise, which is not true. There are equivalency or well, alignment deals to be had, things like that. And it economically damaging Brexit in, done in such a way that little or no thought was given to the consequences. As far as trade is concerned, things are panning out in the manner once stupidly dismissed as Project Fear and will be poorer as a result, which we are. We are poorer as a result of this. Um, it's a bit more of a nerd article, sorry about that, but you know this writer from the Sunday Times has actually done a good job. Um, for the most part and you know with the OBR predicting a 15% drop in exports and a uh, fall in imports as well what happens at that point when there isn't enough stuff to go around when the UK struggles to make goods from components 
um, etc. But um, anyways, look, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.